From plants to volcanoes to planets and animals, everything has a life cycle, including stars. How a star changes throughout its entire life is called stellar evolution. We can live around 100 years, which may seem like a lot, but stars can be around for millions, billions, or even trillions of years. So how can we, with such short lifespans, understand and study the life cycle of a star? Well, we have the technology to study stars all over our visible universe, and these stars are all in different sizes, colors, and stages in their lives. Using snapshots of all the different stars we are observing, we can piece together a complete picture of a star's life. Let's explore the stars of our universe and piece together how stars are created, how they generate light and heat, and how they can end their life in spectacular ways. Stars are born in huge clouds of gas and dust called nebulae. A typical nebula is many light years across, and they are so large you can see them in binoculars or telescopes while you're stargazing here on Earth. One example is the famous Lagoon Nebula in the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. This type of nebula is made up of mostly hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen is the simplest atom consisting of one proton and one electron. Helium is the next simplest atom. It has two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. Protons and neutrons reside at the center of atoms. The center of an atom is called the nucleus. Electrons within an atom surround the nucleus. Even though atoms are very small, they do have some mass, and therefore, a little gravity. If something were to compress the atoms together in one part of the nebula, that region would have more mass and therefore more gravity than its surroundings. This increased gravity would pull in more atoms, causing that part of the nebula to collapse inward. The pressure and temperature in the center increase as it is compressed by the matter that is continuously pulled inward from all directions. Eventually, it will become hot enough in the center for electrons to escape from their atoms and create the fourth state of matter, plasma. Plasma is a mixture of free electrons and nuclei that are missing electrons, all moving at high speeds. The nuclei within this region of plasma are constantly colliding with each other. While the temperature reaches about 18 million degrees Fahrenheit, collisions between hydrogen nuclei can produce a highly energetic reaction called nuclear fusion. You may recognize that term. Nuclear fusion is the power source of hydrogen bombs. The whole fusion reaction has a few steps, but the net result is that four protons, which are the nuclei from four hydrogen atoms, combine to form the nucleus of a helium atom. A tremendous amount of energy is released in the process. Stars balance between outward and inward forces. Gravity is always pulling inward. The fusion reaction is always exploding outward. Stars come in many sizes. Our star, the Sun, is a medium-sized star, not the biggest or the smallest. Stars with less mass have less gravity pulling inward, which affects how they live and eventually die. Our sun will follow the pattern we see in low-mass stars. Eventually, these stars will build up a substantial amount of helium in their core. Hydrogen fusion reactions continue in a shell around the now helium core. As this happens, gravity will cause the helium core to collapse inward. As it does, it heats up and the pressure builds until there is enough energy for helium to fuse into carbon and oxygen. As a result, the star will expand becoming a red giant. When our sun does this, it may be so large that it envelops the Earth. Don't worry, we will have 5 billion years to get ready. After running out of helium in its core, the star will kick off its outer layers into space and form what is called a planetary nebula, leaving behind its white, hot, but non-reacting core, called a white dwarf, which will cool very, very slowly over trillions of years. But the sun is not the most massive star. Stars with more mass, more than about 10 times the sun's, die in a different way. Since they have more gravity, and therefore more pressure in their cores, they can produce even more complex and even more energetic nuclear reactions. These reactions fuse progressively heavier and heavier elements, and with the extra energy, they can swell into even larger red supergiant stars. And Aries, the brightest star in Scorpius, is an example of a red supergiant that is about 12 times as massive and has a diameter about 700 times larger than our sun. 
In the largest stars, the fusion chain continues, releasing energy by smashing together heavier and heavier elements. It will march down the periodic table, with the core developing a layered, onion-like arrangement of elements and reaction zones. This goes on until the element iron. For elements lighter than iron, nuclear fusion reactions will release more energy than was needed to smash them together, creating the heat and outward pressure that supports a star. But iron fusion will release less energy than went in. So our star, which has been balanced between outward pressure and inward gravitational force, suddenly has the chair pulled out from under it. All that unsupported weight catastrophically collapses the core, resulting in a massive shockwave which rebounds outwards as a gigantic explosion of heat, gas, and radiation called a supernova. Supernovae are spectacular cosmic events. They are so bright for about a month that they briefly outshine the light of all the other stars in their galaxy combined. After a supernova, there are two fates for the star depending on how much mass it had. If it had around 10 times the mass of the sun, the core collapse will be so violent that the individual atoms will get pulverized. Electrons will combine with protons to form a city-sized ball of neutrons, hundreds of trillion times more dense than water. This is what we call a neutron star. Because this bizarre material is so unfamiliar, we don't know very much about how neutron stars work. However, as they spin around, they send out powerful beams of radiation. Because these stars are often spinning rapidly, we see the radiation beams as regular pulsing radio flashes, called pulsars. When they were first detected in the late 1960s, astronomers even, briefly, entertained the idea that they were signals from extraterrestrials. If a star collapses with more than about 15 times the mass of the sun, things get even more bizarre. Even crushing the atoms into neutrons isn't enough to stop the collapse, and the core collapses even further into, well, we just don't know. In these ultra-forceful collapses, the leftover core becomes so dense that its gravity will not let light escape from nearby. So it's hard to say exactly what's left over. It may collapse to some exotic, ultra-dense state that we don't know about yet, or it may just collapse to a single point in space. We call this mystery a black hole. Astronomers were recently able to get our first ever picture of a black hole. This is the shadow of the supermassive black hole at the center of the distant galaxy Messier 87, a black hole that is, luckily, 50 million light years away from Earth. All the elements heavier than hydrogen and helium were created inside stars. Without nuclear fusion and spectacular supernovae, chemistry would not exist. There would be no building blocks for planets, for oceans, mountains, or clouds, or for life. Piecing together the story of stellar evolution not only deepens our understanding of the universe, but it also reveals a deep connection between ourselves, the life and world around us, and the cosmos. Think about the atoms of oxygen you are breathing in right now, the iron flowing in your blood, the calcium in your bones, all the substances and minerals of the earth. Each one of those atoms was assembled in the life and death of an enormous star billions of years ago. We are made of stars is a beautiful, poetic thought, and it is also very literally true.